Hello and welcome to this Just Physics video tutorial that will take you through how to download and install and run the software. First of all, we're going to download the Just Physics software from the Just Physics website. So we go to Downloads. This then brings up a downloads page. And if we scroll down, you can see we have to enter some details in here. So we'll put the name Joule Organization. We'll put as a university for now. In the next one, we can put something here that's quite useful for us to know the type of users that we have. So in this case, we'll just put research. And then in the area of expertise, we'll put uh, CFD. In the email box, we're just going to put the Jules Physics email for now as an example but this is useful so that we can contact you about software updates in the future. Okay, so then we go and click on this little box here to select Jules Physics and then we go through the recapture so we click on I'm not a robot in this case we have to select bridges so we click, click, click and click verify okay all done then we have all the information about GDPR compliance and then we click submit. This then brings us to the downloads page and you can see here that you should receive an email but in case you don't you can just click on this link just here and this will download the software to your uh, machine as a zip file. So if we go to a file browser and you can see here that we have unzipped the um, the Jules Physics software so that it has its own folder and if we go into that folder you can see we've got quite a few other folders just there so Bing doc examples. If we go into bin you can see we've got Linux and Windows. In Linux this is where we have all of the executables for this sort of thing so Gen case for example Linux 64 but then we've also got some of the pre-compiled libraries which for Linux end in .so if we then go to Windows, we have exactly the same thing, but the files have a .exe uh, ending. Okay, so these are the executables. And then for the uh, uh, pre-compiled libraries, they have a .dll, so a dynamic link library uh, extension. Okay, so we'll go through that a bit later. So if we go back to the software now, and you can see that what we're actually going to do now is go into the source directory, so src and in the source directory there's the main source one here you have all of the files that are used to create the Jules Physics software okay so C++ is for C++ and then .cu is for CUDA there's the make file which is used to compile it there's also a make file CPU only okay if you go into Visual Studio here we've got all the files that are needed to load it into Visual Studio if you want to change the code and if you want to compile it uh, yourself. In lib we have the libraries so in the Visual Studio libraries you can see here we've got the .lib files and then under Linux you can see we've got .so files and .a files these are Linux versions of uh, libraries. Okay so now we're going to go into the documentation and you can see we have three directories there under guides this is where we have our Jules Physics guide so this includes various things here we've got the address of our wiki which is actually where we where we um, have all our information so if we go to a web browser and we scroll down here you can see all the different uh, explanations with the table of contents that the wiki covers so if we click on open boundary conditions here we have an explanation of boundary conditions as they are implemented within the Jules Physics uh, software this is so that you can understand what the, the software uh, is doing. If we go back now you can see we've got things like the XML guide so uh, software in Jules Physics or the cases in Jules Physics are set up using an XML file and this file will take you through how to set up uh, different cases. Okay so let's go back now to the other folders here we're going to go into the help and these are all the different help files that are used in uh, Jules Physics so you can access these um, using various different commands but if you click on them you can see here you've got the guide to all the different options that you can use for each particular uh, executable okay so there's an example at the bottom of running Jules Physics um, with uh, a particular case 
OK. So if we now go back to the doc files, you can see under the XML format, here we've got some very general examples of XML. So this is the the input file that's used to tell first GenCase and then uh, ultimately Jaws Physics how to run the software. And you can see this is standard XML format and so it's easily uh, understandable. There is a graphical user interface for this which we'll, uh, we cover in a different video. Okay, you can see there's lots of different example um, uh, XML files here. Here we've opened the one for uh, wave paddles. So this is for piston flap and here you can use you can create regular waves just here or here's an example of how to use uh, instead of a paddle you use a flap to cause regular waves. So that's just an example. Okay, so let's go back now to the main code and we're going to have a little look at the examples. The examples includes all of the plug and play cases that come with the software. If we click on the examples main, here we've got a PDF file of all the different cases that come with the software that you can run to see how it uh, the software works. Okay, so if we go into main, so this is just sort of SPH, so not with anything else other than SPH. We have lots of different examples in there. Chrono includes the ones which use the uh, Project Chrono. So Jules Physics has been coupled to Project Chrono. And if we go into one particular example here and we click on this thumbnail MP4, if you run that particular case and then you do the post-processing, this is what the, the simulation will look like. And you can see that it runs quite nicely there. Okay, So that's under Chrono. If we go back to examples, here we have inlet outlet, so let's look at number seven. So this is the, the hull. And if we just have a look at the example uh, video, uh, you can see that this has got inlet and outlet boundary conditions applied. And then there is a boat in the, the channel there. Um, so that's what will happen if you run that particular uh, test case. We also have uh, multi-phase uh, flow. So this is liquid sediment and liquid gas. So let's just go to a... Um, a wet bed dam break and if you run this particular case you can see that here you have uh, a dam break occurring but the grey white above is the the air which you can see responding okay under motion under motion you can see we've got a lot of different examples of how to impose motion uh, for objects that move within your Jules physics uh, simulation so this is just a, a weight on a pendulum and then we're going to have a little look now at one particular uh, version. So this we're going to run the periodicity case. And where you've got a case dot uh, case def dot XML file, which is like we have here, then this is the definition file that's used to generate the initial geometries. Okay. So we've got some very clear sections of this XML file. We've got const def. Okay. Then we've got the definition of the, the main geometry area, as you can see just there. Then you, if, as we scroll down to the bottom, you can see we've got the execution parameters. These are all the parameters that are needed to run an, X, an SPH simulation, such as time step and things like this. Then we've got different bat files, or under Linux you've got uh, shell files, or shell scripts, I should say. And this is what is used to run the particular software. So under the command prompt, if you double click on that, okay, a command prompt window will come up. Here we go. There it is. And we're now going to run the case with periodicity and we're going to run it on the GPU for Windows 64. And so we type in wcase periodicity win 64 gpu.bat. Okay. So if we end, click enter and we start to run that particular case, you can see that the, the simulation is now running and you can see that GenCase has generated 23,808 particles successfully and then as the simulation runs you can see that output files are generated and it's telling us that they're output there. If we go into the output directory for this particular case you can see here we have got some initial output files uh, uh, just here and 
If we go into data, you can see that actually the real output files from the simulation have been generated there. Okay, so you can see we produced three output files so far. Okay, and there's number four that's just arrived. And there you go, there's, there's part 0004.bi4. So bi4 is the binary output file. If we look at the finished version of this, okay, so if we click there and we click into data, okay, so this is the finished one, you can see we produced a lot more binary files and this has enabled us to finish the, the simulation. Okay, now we're going to go and uh, visualize this and so we're going to use Paraview to do this. Okay, so we've copied the, the, the location and we're going to open some of the initial files. So we copy in the, the location of the folder and we're going to select the boundaries first. If we click apply, this is what happens. Then we click on the Y plus button to get the correct orientation and then we change the color of our particles and then we want to actually add the particles and the post-processing automatically does this for you. So then we click and there we have our particular test case. Here we're coloring the particles according to their ID number and if we then press play you can see that this periodic case is flow flow goes out on the right and comes back in on the left okay thank you very much for this video we hope this has given you enough information to get started using jaws physics